Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel, and it is the year 1149 AD, as we rejoin Folk III and the Angevin Plantagenets. Welcome back to the channel, thank you for your continued support as the channel cracked 15,000 subscribers recently, and that is really cool, so thank you so so much. So in the last episode, quite a few things happened. Uh, first of all, you know, we expanded the holdings a little bit, uh, fought a war in Iberia with an ally, and got our wife placed as the Duchess of Auvergne, which of course leaves our son and heir to possibly inherit all of the lands of Berry, Auvergne, and Aragon. So it could be really interesting to see what happens? I mean, here's the little bit of a race against time scenario. How the realm could split up is, of course, there are two sons. There is Count Henri of Limousin, and there's Richard Plantagenet. And depending on which way things go with Aragon, it could get... Um, I'm not going to say dicey, but it could get definitely a little bit interesting here for the Plantagenets moving forward. So as I unpause the game, we're going to see where we go here. Counselor left court, your spouse, Duchess Plegida, left her position and your court as a result of her inheriting a title. Yes, of course, that is the key thing. We fought a war for our beloved wife, and now it's basically a dual duchy in a roundabout way, not directly, but it kind of plays into that, and I, I do like that. Uh, let's see here, what can we do as far as alliances? Uh, Fulk will not do it, Infante Ramiro will not either, but hey, it's at least worth checking out. We can still create the Duchy of Orléans, but I don't really have any interest in doing that. Already talked about losing some lands here. Uh, to Count Henri when he inherits the Duchy of Van, but again, Limousin, I'm not too terribly worried about this. It's more about spreading the power and the influence of the Plantagenets and the Angevin throughout France and Western Europe, and so we're slowly getting that way. The other way, the other thing we need to keep in mind, of course, we now have, we go over here, a pressed claim on the Duchy of Normandy, which is, of course, something we cannot um, ignore for too terribly long and see which direction we end up going there. In fact, what I think I'm going to do is, uh, let's see, negotiate an alliance, of course. I eagerly propose formalizing ties. The Infante Ramiro of Galicia. Sure, we will accept that. Uh, what I want to do, in fact, is have our bishop fabricate a claim on men. Now, for me, this isn't really fabricating, as historically we do have that. Without care, death from above. Small errand in town has kept my attention longer than I'd have liked, but at last my entourage and I head for home. The residents of Anjou bustled through the streets of its largest town, each going about their humble lives, with little thought for the noble riding through the streets. A sudden, searing awareness burns itself into my consciousness. Danger! Something is directly above me, descending fast. Throw yourself to the side. 80% chance you gain the trait incapable. I mean, incapable means physical injury or mental disability. Oh boy. And he is incapable. And we're now sharing power with Count Geoffroy of Poitiers. And he has taken the head of the family, of uh, the dynasty and everything. So we have a regency due to this. The dark thoughts, a mental breakdown. Guilt and shame have been plaguing me as of late. All my thins, sins, my flaws, my failings, these dark thoughts distract me from my responsibilities and keep me awake at night. I feel like I must do something to put an end to this mental anguish. Um, maybe drinking. Writing my worries down will help. This actually works because he is a scholar. So, he is now a journaler. That is a quick reminder, of course. 
We did have some, we, we figured out, we uncovered that somebody was trying to murder us. So Count Benoit is the man we're looking at since he is a known criminal, an attempted murder, allowing you to imprison him uh, without being viewed as a tyrant. He loses opinion and he will leave, if you fail to imprison Count Benoit, he will leave Countess Eloise's court. So, yes, we are going to try to imprison him. That is the step we're going to go. Try to catch him. I mean, he's obviously still trying to murder Folk. Renegade. Count Benoit has managed to avoid capture and has fled to the countryside. So now Benoit. What we will do here instead, we're going to try to murder him. Let's start scheme. Traitor. So he's on the run, and we need him dead for sure. Pay a ransom uh, to impress folk is dear to me. Would you let her go in return for this offer? Sure. Faction has been created against King Philippe II by our wife, a liberty faction. Oh boy. Oh boy. She's got some power now, and she is not afraid to use it apparently so that's something to keep an eye on uh, do want to change our rally point back to our capital and see what happens so the region swings scales of power against you okay count Geoffroy. that's not good that is not good further further is mandate so let's take a look at that County Vendôme gained thuggish recruiting for 10 years. This was an abuse of power, caused a strife with Count Chefroy's pure vassal. Regent is swing reach new level and more borrowed powers are available to the regent. So we'll see how long this takes. It's not a good situation for Folk to be in. He's in a regency. His wife is, well, she's looking to scheme against the King of France. Uh, yeah, I mean, if there's one thing I have to say for this Let's Play series, it's definitely been really eventful. All right, well, I want to sway Osborne at some point here. We need to get, get our clergy back up. The existence of my plot to murder Count Benoit has been discovered. While my involvement is not yet known, this will make it a lot more difficult to bring my plans to fruition. Curses. Let's actually take a look at that right now and see who we can convince. Gerard de Nîmes? And what if we bribe him for 75 gold? Yeah, that's definitely worth it. So he is joining the murder scheme. Who else? We've got a court physician here, a courtier. If we bribe him for 50 acol, we've got the money. And we're adding stress. But uh, we want this guy. We want this guy dead. Religious head has been established. I'm not worried about that. Alliance expired with Ramiro of Galicia. And we've got some people who joined the scheme. And what else can we do? We can try to negotiate this alliance. We can't. Can't do anything. So it's kind of just time to sit back and see what happens. In line to inherit. I mean, none of that has changed. Just, uh, this is a tense and tenuous time for Folk now, given that he is incapacitated, essentially. He's incapable. So, I mean, that drops his diplomacy, stewardship. I mean, everything drops down by six. His prowess is down. His learning's still pretty high. Uh, his dread loss is down 100%. Natural dread gets dropped and cannot have children during this time. Fertility minus 30%. Severe penalty to health. So, not a good time for Folk, who's just kind of sitting there in bed. He's not sitting there. He's lying there. So, as this 
unfortunate circumstances happening. Uh, let's just kind of go out here and take a look and see what's happening in the world at large. Galicia continues to expand in Iberia. So you basically have two major power players here with Aragon, Castile, and Galicia. Leon is sitting there pretty small. And Al-Andalus is still there, but it uh, looks like they're going to push to get rid of that. Lines about legacy. The latest work of my acquaintance, Countess Aina, has become all the rage at court of late. The piece deals with memory and what we leave behind. Aina has publicly dedicated it to me. A lament for the Duke. What man does not hope to rest when tired? His work surrounding the happy retired? Tis rare enough for men to admit that given chance, they'd change quite a bit. So far I've kept my thoughts to myself, but the buzz has grown too dramatic to ignore for much longer. I don't quite know what to feel about this. Uh, and uh, I can see this is truly heartfelt. Yes. Yes, indeed. Home's lauded, and we have a new lifestyle perk. So we can either go down a hole of body, which seems to be kind of important right now. Anatomical study, so a court physician costs less to hire. Hole of body, uh, the ultimate trait here. Fertility boost gets up, medium boost to health. Stress gain drops by 20%. Or we can get, go down the theologian side of things. Well, he's more an astute learner than necessarily this. So this is interesting. He's also a crusader. So that would fit more in a religious sense. So we're going to go with faithful clergy opinion gain a plus 10. So that is the direction we are going to go. Which actually should really help. Uh, in the sense that our bishop on our council now likes us. Barely, but he does like us. So again, back to the world at large. Look at the Holy Roman Empire. They're gobbling up more and more of Italy. They've expanded, I mean, throughout East Central Europe. Um, they are quite large. Poland, very strong here. Norway continues its presence. Uh, here in Pomerania. So it looks like the County of Men, we've got our claim there. That's great. Faction created against King Philippe, a peasant rabble. Hmm. Denmark is there, but not overly large. Sweden is growing here. Estonia, interesting growth here. Ruthenia, very, very large. The Byzantine Empire is at war and continues to shrink. The Selchuks, huge. Huge empire here. The Oguz, Central Asian absolute powerhouse. Accosted. My agents have scheduled a journey for Count Benoit, which will take them through dark woods. All that is missing is the band of thugs that will tragically slay him in a highway robbery. Gone wrong. Can already imagine his blood seeping into the dark soil. Oh, the Wilners can be such a dangerous place. Yes, we will do that. Accosted. It seems Count Benoit has escaped God's judgment yet again. My hard thugs failed to overpower his retinue. Worse still, a few of them were captured alive and revealed that they had been paid for the attack. It did not take long to trace the payment back to me. Typical bandits. They will say anything to get off lightly. Uh, not, not great. Not great. He doesn't like us. But the murder scheme on Camp Benoit has thusly been ended, unfortunately. England continues to expand, but in Ireland. A prisoner in my own body. What day is it? How long have I been resting this time? I find myself searching the faces of my frequent visitors for any indication, wrinkles or scars, anything, to serve as proof that time still passes. Somehow the interactions I have with others feel like they're take, talking at me, not to me. Am I still me or a soul removed from my body? Am I living or just merely existing? So become melancholic. So that drops diplomacy. Martial stewardship and intrigue by one. Fertility drops by 10% and a moderate penalty to health. Oh boy. Things are not looking good for Folk the Third, where things had been going 
in a rather good direction. And part of what I'm going to do here to kind of role play this is, I mean, he is incapable. Yes, we have a regent, but uh, I'm not playing as the regent. We're playing as Duke um, Folk the Third. See, a faction has been disbanded and a new faction has been created. Excellent. So the way we're going to try to play this is actually to not. I mean, he is incapacitated, so there's not really much he can do at this point. He's not in charge of his affairs or his lands. That's that's um, the uncle, Count Geoffroy of Poitiers, an evil planner. Look at him. He's a journaler. He's a sodomite, an adulterer, scholar, a hunter, intellectual, callous, fickle, and calm. Not a very nice person, to say the least. I mean, granted, you know, Folk's father didn't really treat him well, but that, you know, those are details. And here we can see, as far as what can and can't be done, we can't declare war. Uh, because Folk is incapable, he can't do anything. I mean, we're essentially in a in an odd situation here. We can see the region swings the scales of powers against you of just kind of waiting. And the wait is over. Duke Folk III of Barry has left this world at 36 years of age. He died from a seizure. A zealous man, he fought for the glory of God against the heathens in one of the greatest holy wars of recent history. Duke Henri ascends to the throne. Having mastered many skills, he is sure to be admired by his subjects. So a 12 year reign of Actually, a very capable ruler comes to an end. And now, Duke Henri, 14 years old, is... Well, he's in charge, but we've had things change a little bit. If we take a look at the lands here, Poitiers has been carved out from these lands. Uh, if we look at Poitiers, the brother and the current heir, Richard of Poitiers, a dishonorable villain, is the Duke of Poitiers. So that'll be something to keep an eye on. Uh, we see here he has a thousand in his military strength. We have 3,200. I mean, that is Poitiers. It's definitely something we can still take. Take a look at Aragon. And the primary heir is still Henri. If we look at Auvergne, the primary heir is still Henri. So, yeah, let's take a look at Henri, who is above his domain limit at this point. Duke Henri, at 14 years old. He is focused on intrigue, and that is his strength here. But he's craven, he is patient, okay? He's greedy and charming. So patient, greedy, charming. So he's going to bide his time, try to woo people. But because of his patient nature and being craven, war is not exactly at the top of his mind. As far as claims go, of course, he has an implicit claim on the county of Auvergne and the Duchy of Auvergne is a press claim on the Duchy of Poitiers and an unpressed claim on Normandy. Beyond that, of course, his prestige at 52. Now, he's got a ton of money, but that's really it. And um, Count Geoffroy, who is the great uncle, is still the regent in charge. So, yes, what, what a memorable episode already. Okay, we've got things to look for here. Let's take a look at our council. And of course, we don't have a spouse right now. We need a capable chancellor. So, Mayor Ebon, Mayor Fulk of Touraine would be pretty good. Actually, with a 22. Um, other, I mean, nobody really likes us. Is there a powerful vassal? Count Angelbert the Crusader. He's powerful. So, I mean, he's... He actually would be a good marshal. So we're going to assign Mayor Folk. 
to be a chancellor. And then as far as a marshal goes, we're going to go with, go with Count Angelbert, the Crusader of Provence, because he's also a vassal who wants to be on the council. So he will be in charge of that. Interesting, interesting. So you need to continue to promote the culture there. That's going to be our, our focus. No, sorry, that's not a valid target. Duh. <laughs> We're going to go around here. We're going to go to, uh, let's do Turin. That would be, that would be a good one. Is there anything else that needs control? Limousin. Definitely to increase county control there. Here we need to disrupt schemes. Yeah, I mean, nobody really likes us too much. To try to sway Osborne. You need to get the clergy on our side. We can go for a grand tour. We are above the domain limit, so we need to basically put somebody else in charge of something. Limousin. I'd be okay to give that away to someone worthy. I think the scarred bodyguard and acclaimed knight Savary de Levis. He is Angevin in culture. He has also been a loyal servant to the family. So, um, he's, I mean, we'll invalidate this acclaimed knight. I don't really care. He becomes our vassal. And with that, the bodyguard position is vacated. So now we need a new chancellor. And here, I think we will go with, is there anybody powerful? He's already a marshal. Mayor Ibon. Fine, we will assign you to that position. And a betrothal. This would be very, very important. So I'm going to take a look at who would be fitting as a potential wife for Henri. So I think one that would work here is the Infanta Gundeperga of Sicily. Get an alliance with the Kingdom of Sicily. She's Catalan. Decent marshal. She's content, callous, and humble. That could be one. Uh, intimidated by her dreadful reputation. I mean, there aren't many great ones to pick from here. We have someone that's Angevin. Um, she's okay, but she's gluttonous. Not really big on that. We have a Dauteville, who's trusting, zealous, brave. Duchy of Calabria Alliance. That wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing. There we go here. Greta Rogne, Rogne, Rog, I can't even speak. Estrid, Greta. She's deceitful, vengeful, temperate, but she is quick. She's Danish, very strong on intrigue and learning. An alliance with the county of Reba. Um, there's just not a lot here that really tickles my fancy. I mean, a, a Norman. Actually, I like a Norman. I mean, we've got a press claim on Normandy. Uh, she's brave, zealous, content, trusting, good martial ability. Yes, I think this would be a nice little marriage for Eleonora at 18. What else we have? She's a forder, misguided warrior. I think, uh, I think that's a good one. We will send that betrothal. Beyond that, let's take a look here. Um, negotiate alliances. You potentially negotiate an alliance with your uncle, King Geoffroy, who will not accept difference in rank. His opinion is down. He's fickle. Same. Uh, so that's annoying. Other alliances. Our brother, our uncle-in-law, Guichard, the foreigner of Toulouse. We will negotiate that one. Duchess Brigida, our mother. Of course, we will do that. Count Givas. We will negotiate that one. And Richard, I mean, he's craven. That's not, he's not ambitious. 
you know, I just don't think he's going to go after his brother, Richard. They've got a decent relationship. That's not that's not his major goal here. Be great to get uh, Geoffroy back, but uh, eventually that becomes less of an issue anyway. So yeah, that's uh, whew, it's uh, it's been quite the episode again and already. So now we will continue looking. Your wisdom and mercy are legendary. I have been a good vassal to you, but surely you understand that I have subjects of my own too. My current contract is very restrictive. Surely you would see the wisdom of making it more lenient. And besides, you do owe me. It seems I have little choice. Feudal contract negotiations have been blocked. You used her weak hook to threaten you. All right, well then, that's just the way it is. Well, other than that, we've got uh, plenty of people here in positions. Not overly worried about that. A new bodyguard would be nice. Emmerich wouldn't be bad. Robot, resentful adventurer. It's not exactly a fan. Whereas Emmerich is positive. So we will appoint him to be our bodyguard. Court tutor, Clotaire, would actually be a good court tutor. So we will appoint him as our court tutor. We need a master of the hunt. Count Sigismund of Troyes, he would be a good one. Count Nicolas of Saumur would be excellent. So we'll go with Nicolas. Again, at the moment, just nobody... Nobody's a big fan of this kid. Not even a little. So that's uh, something we just unfortunately have to live with at this point in time. Let's take a look at some of the inventory here. Famed wall ornament. The Duke Slayer. Of course, this is <laughs> the boar that killed Duke Folk while hunting. So yeah, that's that's an interesting one right there. Hit pause here. What else we got? We got a trinket here. The delicious face of Jesus. Inviting the wild. An ancient plaque. Angevin scriptures. These all give decent bonuses. This gives us a prestige bonus. Stress gain, loss, traction, opinion goes up. The Galician coin. Domain taxes go up. Moniker's horn is fertility and spouse opinion. So, where do we sit here? Piety. He's not overly pious. The Angevin scriptures. Hmm, that's not bad. Fighting the wild. The trinket here. The face of Jesus. So we'll unequip that, actually. And put in the Lucky Galician coin in its place. Excellent. I like that. And then we'll kind of see which way things go as we move forward. Hey, we have the Burrs discovered as our uh, culture. So we've got a faction created against us, of course. Power sharing window. We can try to swing the scales. Allow all the realm who truly rule these lands. Hmm... And right now, some people aren't really big fans. We're just going to leave this right now. We're just going to not worry about that at this point. Dear son, I call you to honor our alliance in the war uh, for Countess Apes' claim on the Duchy of Auvergne. Or Auvergne. Accept, and we will raise our army and join the war to defend... Our mother. And it's time to head to the south. I mean, this will be a pretty quick war. I would venture. We're just going to go straight for their capital. And take care of these miscreants who would dare to attack our mother. And threaten our claim. And inheritance. Let's actually go straight for them. I mean, we will win decisively. We have everything in our favor. Depends on how quickly we can get there. Whether or not they disengage from the siege. They do. A playdate. 
Margarita is a lot of fun to be around. She's a little shy most of the time, yet she still makes every still makes every time I see her special. Whenever our eyes meet, my stomach fills up with butterflies. Oh, I wonder if she would like this Narcissus that I found. This flowers for you, Margarita. Gained ten stress. All right, and we have Castle Baileys now. Can we cat catch them in the field before they leave? Yes, we do. Alliance formed with Duke Henri V of Burgundy. Good. And now we will defeat these rebellious forces. And then head to besiege their capital and their castle. A white piece. Yeah, so be it. And we can disband our troops. Alright, that was a quick little taste of what war might look like, and that's about it. What have going on here? Um, England, Normandy, England, uh, maturing feelings. I remember fondly all the good times I shared with Margarita when we were younger. And if she now has entered the world of adults, she will always be dear to me, even though she never did return my feelings. I'm lucky to have gotten to know her. So England, nothing going on there. Normandy, what's going on there? He's at war, an internal war that he is winning. Just keeping an eye on all of that. My dear brother, been resporting, uh, sorry, corresponding with your chancellor, Mayor Ebon. I must say that I've come to see you in a new light. Perhaps you are even someone that I one day would be proud to call my friend. Well, I thank you, brother. You know, we've had antagonistic threads of brotherly relationships throughout uh, this series so far. And even though our father and uncle, eh, they got along quite well, I think it would be nice, also given that he's... Not arbitrary or anything like that. He's charming. He's craven, so he's not one to necessarily look for conflict. So maybe nurture a relationship with his brother, the Duke of Poitiers, and kind of see where things go. Interesting, of course, is if Henri dies, well, then Richard inherits everything. I mean, Barry, Ovan, and the Iberian holdings as well. Invitation to meet our peers. Coming of age. The help of Geron, I have achieved an understanding of intrigue that far exceeds that of any of my peers. Even though I had a natural inclination towards the subject, my mastery of it is still an achievement. So I take my first steps into adulthood, I find myself reminiscing about some of the people who have made an impact on the man I've become. At some memorable times with Margarita, she truly helped me understand both myself and love. Du Henri, you're now a man. So I've gained the trait elusive shadow, lost Giraud de Luxembourg as your guardian. You will not forget your fondness of Margarita, plus 20 opinion. You're no, uh, you is no longer Giraud de Luxembourg's ward. You lost the trait charming. Okay, so now... He has come of age, still has, of course, a regent. But here's the main thing. So here's how we're going to play it. Here's how we're going to play it. He is an elusive shadow. He is excellent at intrigue. I mean, plus 17% at scheme success is huge. Uh, he's poor at stewardship, poor at learning. Martial and diplomacy are not his thing. He's also craven, so he's not going to look to win things over by war. Instead, it's going to be intrigue. It's going to be murder. It's going to be hoarding secrets and hooks and trying to use and exploit them. That is who this Duke Henri is and who he will become moving forward. So now we have a few things here that we can get to. Our betrothed, we can now marry. So we will send that... Uh, proposal and a lifestyle of course intrigue without a doubt I think skullduggery scheme subversion and secrets 
That is absolutely the direction he's going to go. There's no question about that in my mind. Let's see, do we have anything else here? Lucky Galician coin. We can repair that for 75. We've got the money. Not endorsed by the bishop. Not really worried about that. We can end our regency. So, he will not accept if we discharge entrench regent. If we offer gold, won't accept it. Piety, a hook, nothing. On decline. So, yeah, it's he will not accept to end it. So if we offer nothing, gratitude is its own reward. You stiff count Geoffrey of a just reward. But you know what, Geoffrey de Lusignan? I don't trust you. My father didn't trust you. My grandfather didn't trust you. You are still Anjou. And as such, even though you are Angevin, I don't want that. We will discharge the regent and be done with that. Wedding celebration. So the regent is now less powerful. So the scale power swing has dropped to a lower level and the regent has fewer borrowed powers. Excellent. So we're just moving in the right direction. She's definitely taller. With my marriage to Duchess Eleonora, the realm expects us to throw a suitably extravagant wedding celebration. It is well within my right to collect royal aid duty as part of this. Some may consider it tasteless to levy an extra tax during time of jubilation. Of course I will collect it. Who pays for their own wedding? Obviously. Claim a demand. The right to rule Champagne belongs to Countess Denise of Mont, a divine right. And we have gathered the support required to make it so. Except this fact piece where we will make you do so by force. I will not be threatened. We know where this is heading. And it is off to war. War for the Countess Denise claim on the Duchess of Champagne. They are in fear. We will rally the troops. We will raise our armies. And we will call in allies without... A doubt all of these will come in I mean there's no point in not calling in every possible ally we can find uh, Richard Poitier of course I wonder if he will join he will accept as well yes We'll call them all in, and we will destroy these rebels. But that will have to wait until the next episode, where we get going here with Duke Henri. So not a folk. It's been a while since we've not had a folk at the head of the House Plantagenet and the Angevin. Uh, let me know your thoughts on this momentous, another momentous episode, where we said goodbye to Folk the Third who I actually really liked, and now Henri, his son, the in, the interesting, intriguing, scheming, dirty, nasty Henri, is coming of age and coming to the throne of Barry. So, as always, likes and comments, greatly appreciated, subscribe if you're new, and until next time, I'm Realm Builder Guy, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.